Thank you, Mr. Purti GS. We will pleasure to learn at the events for this inaugural session of the seminar. I extend a very warm welcome to all on behalf of Indian Dairy Engineers Association and BME who has loved all of us for this 11th National Convention of Dairy Engineers and National Seminar on Dairy Process Engineering from Farm to Table and Dairy Expo. We appreciate you all for taking off your busy schedule to join us for today and tomorrow. Firstly, I request Dr. R.I.B. Singh sir, Honorable Vice Chancellor and Director, NDRA, to please come up on the stage. The dignitaries on the diagram, Dr. R.I.B. Singh sir, Honorable Vice Chancellor and Director, NDRA, Engineer A.K. Jain sir, Managing Director, R.E.I.L. Rajasthan, Dr. Shri Prasad Kimothi, ADG, Vice President IDEA, Mr. Bharat Balyan, Director, BME, Finally, Dr. R.K. Swami, Sir. We have Mr. Sunil Dhyan instead of Mr. Bharat Balyan. Thank you for coming, sir. Thank you, Arpita. Life is a symbol of brightness and prosperity. To make I invite all the dignitaries on the dais to please join us for the lightning of the lap. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is my pleasure to welcome you all to the 11th Indian Dairy Engineers Association meeting convention conference at the Indo. At the start of my formal speech, I, I do remember the two great personalities who have been doing a lot of uh, name and fame to engineers fraternity in India, national level and international level. Firstly, Dr. Vijay Kuria, whose uh, anniversary was given last month. Everybody knows his contribution to the dairy industry. Secondly, engineer Vishwit Sirali, whose uh, birth anniversary was given the last month. Dr. Vishwishya, who has been instrumental in shaping the destiny of India after independence during 1947. Sarva is uh, dedication that was traveling.
traveling in a train which I could read just now. He could uh, sense the broken railway line and get the train stop and save many lives. He gave very good definition of definition of for engineers. We design, we construct, we observe, we move, we accelerate the world. We are we are all years years of progress. We are the future of nation. We are the engineers. <laughs> Sir, I I'm very pleased and honored to have the presence of our respected uh, Dr. R. R. P. Singhji, Director and Vice Chancellor of uh, National Air Research Institute, who has accepted our request to be the chief guest on the occasion at a very short notice. And uh, so with your presence, the our small function has become of very great importance. And uh, the participant will do remember your presence on the occasion. I am also very happy to uh, say that uh, Mr. Ekijan, Engineer Ekijan, MD of uh, Rajasthan Electronics and Instrumentation Limited, who has been very kind to travel right from Jaipur to Indore, to be present in our uh, its 11th convention as guest of honor. Uh, I know Mr. Jan for last uh, more than 30 years now. It is because of his uh, sheer hard work, dedication, honesty, integrity to this company that he has come to the level of chair, was chairman, term, managing director, and uh, the real. And the real has progressed, I think, many, many times. Uh, I cannot do the figures, but a uh, lot of progress during his tenure for last two three years as managing director. Uh, so, you welcome to this uh, conference. And our next guest of honor is uh, Dr. Sir Prashant Pomotiri. He is uh, ADD ICR New Delhi. Sir, I don't know much about uh, uh, you because I am meeting you for the first time. But sir, it's a very, very kind of you to be here today at uh, our uh, this 11th convention. Uh, maybe it's a small function, but sir, your presence do make this function very important. Thank you very much, sir. Just for information of the dignitaries sitting on the dais and the delegates. Uh, very brief uh, about the uh, Indian Dairy Engineering Association. This association came into being on 13th of February 2002 with our uh, visionary colleague, Mr. Anwar Majab. He was a great engineer, a very dedicated engineer. And uh, the purpose, when we were discussing what is the uh, basis, basis of the association was to have a common platform for our engineers to discuss about the day-to-day -day progress in the dairy field, dairy particularly with respect to the dairy engineers, what the dairy engineers can do, what the dairy engineers can contribute to the dairy industry, and to and to solve and to discuss and solve the problems of the engineers. Maybe maybe sir, it is related to academic also. Maybe related to the dairy industry. Academics, sir, we have been pursuing with our uh, persons like uh, Dr. Arnab Singh regarding this uh, future of uh, dairy engineers in the industry, starting off for uh, and tech dairy engineering, something like this. Uh, issues. We have uh, successfully conducted 10 uh, conferences at various locations in India. and. Uh, I do remember that the second conference which we had organized in industrial Daily Research Institute at Tana. I am seeing a lot of people, my colleague H.S. Garewal has traveled from Chandigarh. A lot of people are taking a lot of interest. And with this interest, definitely, uh, when I was doing this uh, management course in Adan, uh, Dr. Kurian once gave in a lecture. We told him, sir, we are not getting anything what the people, our teachers are teaching us. We are not getting everything going on the top. 
he he was the person who told that from the from any from any such experiences from any such teachings it's not necessary that you get everything from here even if a person get one one idea one simple idea and it is implemented probably it can change the course of the industry or course of your uh, uh, institute where you are serving uh, with that with that type of deal in mind we must attend we must travel uh, and take trouble to come here and listen to the experiences of uh, great personalities or the persons who have done lot of work they have spent their life in uh, doing research they have spent their life in improving the equipment they have spent everything and i know persons uh, without name that they are doing so so wonderful job mahesh chandra is doing such wonderful job uh, i discussed one problem of the jara dairy with him he simply directed me to some other person and and the efficiency of the plant was increased from uh, uh, like anything so people can do marvelous job with uh, after attending such type of uh, institute coming back to my original you know uh, speech little bit today's conference is on three three main subjects form processing and table probably the today's time most difficult time is for the farmers most difficult time for the farmers in the sense that if they produce more sometimes it will be counter productive as as we are seeing in now nowadays every day tradition ah uh, please don't mind sitting person percent is there every day person is reducing the farm gate prices to manage their day to day activities they are not reducing the consumer prices with the constraint that commodities are not catching good prices so many problems are at the farm level farm farmer income probably can be increased if provided we engineers we engineers can think in a uh, in a proper way or uh, we are in position to guide the farmers a little better way uh, i suggest two three issues to deal with the increased productivity and to improve the farmer income by way of providing him knowledge and equipment to do the value addition that is form level i know in the exhibition also we are seeing at small scale manufacturing provided big institutions like traditions and i myself when i was in job i was assisting all these issues but today with the seeing this position of the farmers i do feel that if the farmers are given are supported by the tradition at the farm level itself instead of transporting the water they they transport the milk in either in condensed form or in the product form it will be more economical and will save the money to the to the dairy uh, industry as well as the farmers number 2 for the proper of keep on the farm and herd of animals and farm equipment etc engineers can can do help we can educate the farmers about clean milk production and organic milk production organic milk production becoming grace people are ready to pay more than 100 rupees per kg of milk provided they get good quality for proper market to the to his milk indigenous milk and milk manufacturing at the farm gate level and also give him training and support for the quality maintenance of the equipment and the table dairy process management i would like to touch only two three issues which i hope my this uh, uh, one and a half days conference will cover number one is the energy conservation energy conservation lot of work lot of work is being done our guest of honor mr jain uh, i i i i i for sure that after 10 years the shape of dairy industry will going to change i think the violence will become thing of past uh even the uh, digital generated set will be omitted from the dairy industry with the support of solar photovoltaic cells because lot of uh, good techniques of energy conservation 
uh, energy storage are being done. Hydrogen separation, hydrogen is a good carrier, good storage. <laughs>
he was an engineer, never thought of that he can think of doing something in Navy in the sea. But when he started thinking, you can see the label Indian dairy industry has achieved and we became the largest milk producer in 1998 and it still retains that position. So that potential we all have, sorry doctors, huh? <laughs> so that potential we all have uh, as an engineer, you know engineer when it works with doctors, they gels up very uh, beautifully, I was talking to Dr. R. R. P. Singh and we could find out some areas where the engineer and doctors can work together. When it comes to dairy industry, I think in dairy if you see the milk and milk components, how the milk should be converted into a milk product. So when this conversion takes place, you know, it's only engineering which is which has a role. You know, a doctor can help you in providing a good herd, a quality herd. It can help you in analyzing, uh, I mean, reading those components, milk components, and how those components can uh, make you comfortable in terms of consumption of those milk products. So it's what the doctor can do. For an engineer, how to reach out, how to reach out to people, the subject today, farm processing and table. So a lot of, you know, machinery has to go into. So let's, let's first uh, make feel proud and uh, I'm really happy uh, to be here on the banner of Indian Dairy Engineers Association. Uh, this association, I remember many years before, they felicitated me as a as, a, as a something like a lifetime achievement for dairy industry. So I owe a lot of responsibility, a lot of commitment. So that comes from you people, not from me. If you see the Indian dairy industry, I think it is the size of the Indian dairy industry uh, starting something like 80,000 crore, which is a huge business. Uh, with something around 166 uh, million metric tons of milk the Indian dairy industry is uh, handling. And you know, uh, until 2020, we'll be touching somewhere around 200 million metric tons. Uh, the industry size would be around 100,000 crores. So, uh, in a population of 130 crore and 100,000 crore is something, you know, very, very big. Now what uh, Sagra was talking of uh, energy, electricity. So in dairy industry, you see, you know, energy has a uh, very big role. And transportation has another very big role. And if you see the energy and transportation and the way energy is being utilized now uh, in the dairy industry, it is either in the form of uh, diesel uh, which is being consumed or in the form of grid electricity and the grid electricity which is coming to us is either from thermal or from nuclear or from hydro. So these are the three four ways. Now you just visualize that what our dairy really industry can do. I was just looking at the figures and the kind of figures which has reached to me we just connect our farm to the table, so that means the society, the chilling centers, the dairy plants, then there's our distribution channel, the distribution network, and then the consumer. And you connect everybody with rooftop solar, whatever roof is available or whatever land is available. The potential comes out to be around. 10,000 megawatt, that is 10 gigawatt. So if we see this industry, which is available to us, that is of the size of around 50,000 crore. So if we couple daily industry with the energy industry, and I'm talking of the renewable energy, where the solar photovoltaic can play a major role, not only that we will become sustainable, we will be much much less expensive, we will be environment friendly, but on the top of it, we will be doing a huge business. So 50,000 crore is not a small thing. The third thing, 
make whatever is produced. Tell me when, when two minutes are that, right? <laughs> okay. So, I know that we, we started late, so we have to be a little cautious on that. So, yeah, I was saying that. Uh, so, when it comes to, you know, uh, farm to uh, uh, people, and uh, I was talking of the renewable energy industry. So, the solar photovoltaic is 50,000 crore, and another is the transportation. So, wherever the milk is produced, right from home to milk collection center, there is some waste to transport. Mostly people are bringing in their buckets, or it is being collected. There is two ways. And from that uh, center to the chili center or to the dairy plant, again, there is some transportation with the means. And then these milk and milk products are distributed across uh, the value chain to the consumer. Again, there is a huge transportation. And the irony with this sector is that whatever way the needs for the transportation are being used, they are idle. After that, they are idle. There is no work. Like we see the milk tankers. Milk tankers comes, delivers the milk, it stays there, then goes back. They are not doing anything else. And you know, the initial is the capital investment, then there is a recurring investment on petrol or diesel. So if you see the per unit consumption, if I take in terms of electricity, the per unit consumption in terms of transportation or say per kilometer consumption uh, is touching somewhere around 25-27 rupees. Excuse sir. So 25-27 rupees, that's a huge money. And another thing is we are polluting it most here. So electric vehicles, where the country has a commitment that by 2030, 2030, we will all be uh, in electric vehicles. So now in electric vehicles, how do we move ahead? There is a huge need of uh, setting up of EV charging infrastructure. Incidentally, REL, uh, the company where, where, where I took work as an engineer training and became managing director in 2011, so recently we have taken up that responsibility to set up the EV charging infrastructure. And initially we are uh, going with Jaipur, Chandigarh and Delhi, where we are setting up the EV charging infrastructure. So if our societies, our chilling centers, our farms, and even the distribution centers, if they decide upon that we will move from the diesel petrol operated vehicles to EV charging or uh, to the EV electric vehicles and the charging infrastructure is built well within the daily, uh, daily uh, chain from farm to uh, table I can't say but yes they can be some, some intermediate way. So this industry itself has a potential of uh, the total potential estimated is something around 700,000 crore, but dairy can really look at at least 40 to 50,000 crore. And both the sectors, the renewable energy and the electric mobility, can give you a lot of saving. And the whatever product pricing we are, you know, deprived of or we think of or we keep on bothering on, we are not able to increase the farmer's uh, price just because it's costly affair for us to process. It's costly a pair for us to receive it. It's costly a pair for us to refrigerate. So all these three areas can be tackled by introducing the renewable energy in a big way, by introducing the electric mobility in a big way, and uh, we can definitely bring a lot of sustainability to uh, these entire initiatives. Now we keep on hearing that uh, uh, so India has uh, become the largest milk producer and uh, we are moving ahead uh, with sustained growth and uh, probably the growth, the Indian dairy mercy growth is uh, highest in the world if I am not wrong. So it's a sustainable growth for year after year and if you see the CAGR in terms of uh, last few years I think we have attained a CSR of 15%. So now if we just take long term you know, uh, sustainable initiatives then probably uh, one can really look at uh, the Indian dairy business as one of the largest opportunity because when we see the renewable energy, it's emerging as the largest uh, uh, renewable energy player in the world 
and if we see the e mobility here also india is emerging as uh, third or fourth largest as e mobility player so if we merge the dairy energy and e mobility i think can really do miracles you know our honorable prime minister though i should not name that uh, uh, they made uh, because it's a acharya sanita and mp but yes it's a government which has mandated the uh, doubling the farmers income so i agree fully with this part that yes we should all work for doubling the farmers income but i also agree that until unless the industry's income is not tripled the farmers income will not be doubled क्यों भाई सीधी बात है या नहीं अगर इंडस्ट्री इनकम तीन गुनी नहीं होगी तो वो फार्मर की इनकम को दो गुनी नहीं होने देंगे ऐसा एक एक वातावरण है और हर हर बिजनेस एनवायरनमेंट में ऐसा होता है एंड इसका जो की है वो है फ्रॉम फेमिली लेवल पे व्हेन वी से केटर टू कंज्यूमर और बिजनेस टू बिजनेस सो व्हेन यू टॉक ऑफ कंज्यूमर अंटिल अनलेस वी provide the triple benefits to the consumer in terms of satisfaction in terms of value for money jab tak hum consumers ko teen guna fayda in terms of satisfaction in terms of jo product wo khareed rahe hain uska fayda hum teen guna nahi denge tab tak hum rather char guna hi denge tab tak teen guna industry nahi hogi aur do guna farmers ko paisa nahi milega ab ye ho kaise to mai kuch ideas मैंने कुछ शेयर किए हैं कुछ और भी शेयर करना चाहूंगा सी टेक्नोलॉजी इज द ऑनली की एज आई सेड इन द बिगनिंग कि इंजीनियर्स ही इसके नीच पे रहे हैं और इंजीनियर्स डॉक्टर्स फार्मर एंड एंड द कंज्यूमर अगर ये चारों मिल जाए तो ये पॉसिबल है बट ऑनली थ्रू टेक्नोलॉजी देयर इज नो अदर वे डिजिटाइजेशन इन ए मास यस इट हैज टू हैपन Currently, we are operating at uh, the world is operating at the NASI four standard. There are a lot of automation and IoT is there, and probably Indian dairy industry has to move ahead now at the NASI four standard. Do not to say that we have to best uh, in class and we have to world class also then after. Whatever we do, like Anand Patel did, it was replicated across the country. So we standardize the arm pattern. Then we standardize the milk factories also. So wherever we provide those milk factories, that should also be standardized and replicated across the country. So standard standardization is the ladder, you know, into success. E mobility I have already discussed. Digitalization, yes, we all agree. Roof of solar, I said, from farm to uh, uh, table, it needs to be there. Energy conservation is another very big area where you know we need to replicate to replace our all machineries where the motor is there. You know, old motor consumes almost three times, four times of the electricity. Plus, you have a fear of failing uh, it off for uh, at times. So, you replace all those motors. I think you are able to recover the cost in one and a half year. So, energy conservation is another. And energy integration in in the plant. You have heat, you have chemical energy, you have heat energy, and uh, you have uh, uh, water energy also. So if you integrate all your bio energy also, if we integrate uh, these energies at different places like farm uh, again in the factory, so that can also save a lot of money. Waste. So waste to energy is another area where we need to work. So farm level, you know, needs uh, that waste of energy kind of products also. So that can bring a lot of sustainability. Plus, it will improve the cleanliness drive. So, which will ultimately improve the health of the citizen. Another area where I see a lot of concerns are there. You know, any any uh, place you will find that a lot of pollution is done there, and we uh, blame uh, sometimes we community, sometimes dairy industry, sometimes. Uh, Even in the AI and all that, what innovation they did, did that people are now uh, able to make the adulterated milk, they are able to make the synthetic milk. So just to get rid of these, because it should not stop our innovation, it should not stop our innovative products also. But at the same time, that uh, the people who just want to make money, we need to keep a check on that. And I, I, I'm 
have a strong opinion. There should be a network of test laboratories across the country. So I think NDRI can take a call and government of India is very keen, uh, particularly the food ministry is very keen to set up such laboratories across the country where anybody can walk in with their milk and milk products and get their, can, uh, uh, test their product uh, and can get the parameters and uh, if the testing is made so easy then you know acceptance of any adulterated milk will not be in the market. You know, we have we, have, uh, we talk of uh, the per liter milk cost. It's already at par with the water in some of the areas. So let's not be bothered that milk will be costly. Let it be costly, but it should be good for the human consumption. So test laboratory, I think, is a very big step that needs to be taken. Another big area. So another big area is the employment transition. You know, daily business already generates a lot of employment because not many hands are required in this world. So, but I consider that there are a lot of gaps in terms of skilled manpower. So, there I think the industry and institute uh, needs to collaborate a little more there because they are, they are already doing a lot. But if there is an institute chair uh, in the industry, that means the daily industry, that Institute chair should take care of those collaborative effort between institute and industry. And similarly in institute there can be industry chair also. So I think uh, all the institute if they have the industry chair also, so industry institute if they collaborate with each other, then there will not be any dearth of uh, skilled people for the daily industry. So it's uh, at uh, production level, processing level, and consumer level, this, these are my concerns and uh, which came to my mind and REL has doing a lot in all these areas, so which you see in the presentation which is being given probably in the later half uh, today. So you more understand what REL is doing and can do and can help you, can take assistance from you. But only the uh, thing which I said in the beginning, I'm dreaming that doubling the farmer's income tripling the industry income and quadrupling uh, the consumer's income. So that will be a win-win situation for everybody and these are few ways and means by which we can do. I'm really happy to be here uh, on the IDEA platform and I wish that uh, this Daily Engineers Association should do wonders and they should keep on going to tier 2 towns because tier 2 towns are really the, going to be the business hub which will really connect the village to the main city and then they can really contribute in terms of improving the, the entire economy. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you all. It's an honor to have Dr. Shri Prasad Kimoti, ADG ICR, with us today. I request you to please address the floor, sir. Uh, very good morning to all of you. The distinguished uh, members from the guys, Dr. Adam, my colleague at uh, NDRI, and the chief guest for uh, this uh, moment on, on this occasion today. Uh, Mr. Jan, the MD of uh, the Lee, uh, Jaipur and uh, the president of uh, IDR, the general secretary of IDR, other dignitaries on the dais, fellow colleagues, members from the industry, scientists, daily professionals, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the, my, my background, uh, as the president was saying, so it is not uh, the daily engineering per se, 
But I am uh, very closely associated with dairy, being part of National Dairy Research Institute as the head of livestock production and also the in charge of the livestock farm. And I am in some of uh, the other way, I, I should say, have been in close contact, close association with the dairy engineers and I am aware of what kind of ideas, the power of the idea, the power of the technology and how they can help in, in bringing up, bring about the improvement in the society. The, the processing is all about the quality and the quality and scalability, marketing and everything. So when, when we talk about uh, the doubling of the farmer's income, being the, the representative of Indian Council of Agricultural Research and being associated uh, with, with the government's initiatives for, for Though, though the moral code of conduct would not allow me to say much about those things, but then uh, our, our mission in the council is how to help the farmers to further increase our in, the income and uh, realize the dream of the government to, to double the farmers' income by 2022. And, and uh, this is uh, uh, the there are a few things, though Mr. Jan has, has uh, elaborately mentioned many of those things. It is the production quality, the, the, the value addition, the how to bring down the cost of production, how to improve on the marketing channels, and how to so let them, uh, if we produce, uh, then there are concerns raised in this uh, forum earlier that, that uh, perhaps uh, increasing the production itself per se it is no solution, no guarantee to increase the income also. Then uh, there are, what are, what are the options available to us? So if, uh, our, our neighborhood, there's a lot of market available insulation market available in the neighborhood. So how can we tap that? Can, by, by the engineers again have, have very important role. So we are number one, you know, one in the country, in, uh, in, in the world in, in terms of the milk production and we are, we are growing at a, a very rapid rate year after year. Then uh, what, what we can, if, if, if we are to to help the industry to benefit, if we have to help the farmer to benefit, then what we need to do is also tap the international market, which is in, in our neighborhood. So for that, we have to improve the production quality, we have to improve the, 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 the reduce the cost of production, we have to be very competitive in the international market. So the, the other day, just two, three days back, there was uh, one, one big uh, uh, platform uh, created in, in uh, New Delhi. So it was the startup and the entrepreneurship country, which, which was held. Uh, there was, uh, apart from the ministers, the government of India, the, uh, one, in one of the sessions, the honorable minister of, of Petroleum and natural gas was there. So he was, uh, the, the idea was again echoed from this floor that perhaps uh, we need to tap in non conventional, unconventional energy. So that is a very, very important area. If we are to reduce the cost of production, if we are to be competitive, apart from increasing the quality of the production, we have to bring in the cost of production, processing and marketing channels. For that we need to tap in and, and produce and generate unconventional energy resources. Whereas solar energy is one, but the major, apart from solar of course, so we are very well poised in, in this country to, to tap in the solar energy being, being located strategically in the world. So that is one area, the water energy, 
they weigh the energy, these are the ones, but which is uh, very important and which is also uh, the, the mission of uh, uh, the very important program, the Swatch Bharat mission is the energy from waste to wealth. So this is, uh, that, that uh, I was referring to the honorable minister who was there in one of the sessions and he gave a call to the scientific community, to the engineering community and to, to the entrepreneurs and, and uh, also to, to the startups to bring in ideas. Idea is, is the title over here and, and this is a, a very, very, very beautiful word and if ideas come, then the innovations come. Innovations and, and, and then uh, the new things are developed. So he gave a call and he also talked about that uh, perhaps to funds to the tune of uh, 3 lakh crores are available for in, in uh, such a, a, a venture wherein these these waste waste to wealth technologies, but particularly in in biofuel production, alternative sources of energy production, these are tapped. So this is this is uh, no debt of money. Only idea have to be there. The only innovative parts, and uh, no better than than the engineers. This Pura for for uh, addressing those issues. And this is this is a very very important occasion where wherein uh, during the next two days a lot of issues would be uh, debated, discussed, deliberated upon, and and perhaps important recommendations would, would emerge. Then uh, there is uh, this uh, Make in India, which which is initiative again under very beautiful initiative by the government. And which is, which is uh, again uh, the, the very very uh, sub, uh, basic subject for, for this aura to de deliberate upon. And I see uh, I was uh, glancing through the program of, of, of this forum, and I was I was it was a pleasant surprise for me to notice that this is one of the very important sessions in uh, India initiative. So this is uh, the, the flow where, wherein again the engineers, particularly the dairy engineers, have, have to contribute because uh, we are the number one milk producers, alright, but our farmers are not benefiting to the extent uh, they should. So, so this, is, this is another story that uh, we are talking about, we are listening, that a lot of suicides are happening all around in the country by the farmers, but wherever the dairy or, or, or wherever the right uh, component was there, be it dairy, be it fish, be it FAL, be it any other component, wherever the farmers are taken to, uh, the allied industry, allied enterprises, the suicides have, have not been there. Uh, this is uh, the alternate situation and we have this added responsibility to ensure that perhaps we contribute, we contribute uh, to, to the development of the technologies, to application of the technologies and, and uh, develop newer devices, newer equipment, newer technology solutions for, for energy of course, for, for reducing the cost of production and also this is uh, one more thing which, which is again very crucial to, to reduce the wastes, the, the post harvest losses. This is uh, one of the very important uh, issues which is to be addressed. Though, though fortunately in dairy sector uh, not ma much losses are there, but still uh, very substantial losses are there which, uh, which have to be minimized. The losses uh, in uh, if we talk about all the agricultural community commodities are to the extent about 13 percent. So the rate could, could go from 2 percent up to the extent of 40 percent in some of the cases, particularly in vegetables. So in dairy sector, the losses are not that much. Let the farmers know how to dispose of the surplus milk. But, but then the cost of production, 
and and all these issues have to be tackled by by, by this this quora and uh, the as as uh, I I for for me to be able to attend this conference and uh, to share some of the council's concerns is uh, I would like to thank uh, our general secretary over here. Uh, Sami Sahab, so who, who taught me, who talked to me, and the movement, he, he said that uh, perhaps uh, this seminar is going to be held in uh, this uh, great city, this beautiful city, this city, beautiful city, clean, the part of the second, uh, community here, this, this city is, is uh, being named the cleanest city of the country, so I readily accept it, and uh, I am very delighted, very happy to be here amidst you, to learn from you about uh, daily, what daily industry is doing and how daily industry would, would, would uh, like to go from here. And I wish uh, the two day deliberations a huge success and uh, I hope and uh, sincerely hope and thank that uh, these deliberations, you for very important recommendations would, would, would emerge from this. And there is, there is one uh, thing which, which uh, uh, the uh, oral, uh, the president uh, of the idea raised from the floor that uh, uh, perhaps uh, in, in larger daily farms where uh, processing capacities uh, exceed one lakh liters, uh, that's uh, a, a uh, professional engineer and, and energy auditing and uh, professional engineer must be posted. This idea I, I would uh, convey at, at the level of the council to the council and perhaps uh, this, this will be addressed. The other, other thing uh, which, which uh, is, is again very important uh, for uh, area here uh, is uh, and where I have been associated very closely is the production <coughs> production quality production quality of the milk. Uh, the, the, you, you are very well aware the processing is 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 after comes afterwards initially the production quality is very important. For and, and uh, unfortunately, what's happening apart from our uh, small scale production at the farmers level or, or producers level, the problem is that the production quality is not that much, the, at that good. Even, even at the, uh, the farms, the organized farms, professional farms, so the expertise is not allowed. So issue is that we don't have, we, we are talking about higher degrees. Graduates and postgraduates and PhDs in animal and data sciences, but we don't have those basic manpower, the diploma holders, say for instance. So who would be helping the, the farmers and the producers to produce at the lower cost by, by keeping the cost down? So this is another initiative which, which, which the government has taken that perhaps in this diploma category we would like to to bring in more and more diploma holders in their product, including in, in, uh, in various disciplines of agriculture, including dairy production and dairy processing also. So this would, this would uh, in some way try and address this uh, issue of, of production quality and, and uh, would be able to uh, help us in, in achieving the international marks, the quality standards. So which which uh, sometimes uh, we are found lacking in uh, if we are addressing the issue of export, more and more exports from, from particularly to the developed world. So which, which we have not been able to do so far. If we have not been able to make a big dent in this side so far. So our, our exports, our production of course is increasing, exports are also growing. But, but not to the extent we would like being the largest uh, producer of the milk in the world, that is uh, New Zealand, uh, what, whatever they produce, 97% of that total production which means they have is exported. So our, our share in the 
international export market is negligible, that should go up. And that would only happen if, if the production quality, uh, uh, what we have, whatever we are producing, would also go up, would, would improve, and, and we would certainly be able to help the industry, help the farmer, and help the nation in the end. With this, uh, these, uh, because there is not much time is there, uh, the, the, the speakers, including our chief guest, have to speak, and then, uh, then the, there will be technical session, which is, uh, this is, this is a, just an essential necessity, which is the, the normal function. After the real business is yet to start, and uh, I will not stay much between you and the deliberations which will happen in the course of these two days. And I would thank the organizers once again to, who have invited me to this beautiful uh, city and for this beautiful gathering over here to, to, uh, to be able to address the industry, the brains behind what is happening in the dairy, dairy industry sector. And I would like once again thank you all for the service. And I also request Dr. Manish Kumar Ji and Dr. Zikhar Naik sir to write read out the citation for the award. On the Dairy Challenge Convention is exhibition of information experiment in the field of the injury. Sir, Ravi Kumar completed graduate show from India and Karma on Giant Adam Pradesh Cooperative Federation, really work for 20 years and with various capacities, as a manager, deputy manager, and marketing manager. As a very manager, he reviewed the product, reviewed the product profit making, many plants, really. The clever giant has offered the software of very, very engineering, APAU, and planned and executed dot into the operation of experimental dairy plant for the department. He pursued doctoral studies in the field of engineering at India Karna, specializing in application of thermal energy for cooling cooling. He was promoted as a professor of dairy engineering in 2011. As a member of board of management of university, he played a pivotal role in upgrading dairy technology program at Tirupati University in the full fledged the College of Dairy Technology. He was also instrumental in reviewing the course of the of dairy technology community and upgrading to another territory. He was organized the secretary of seven national tournaments of dairy years held at Dairy Sales College Tirupati. He is updating interest in utilization of non conventional energy in dairy field as Prepare him to undertake various projects on solar, solar energy utilization, especially the vehicle absorption of the energy system to achieve mills at village society level. He was closely associated with successful completion of NAIT project e courses for B technical program. He continues to hold great interest in teaching in various educational institutions. In recognition of his meritorious service to the dairy engineering profession, the organizing committee of convention and seminar and IT take pride to honor Dr. Ravi Kumar by presenting him this citation on the occasion of 11th day in the India Convention and Seminar held at Indo. Thank you. Uh, organizers, the uh, Indian Dairy Engineers Association for this uh, honor given to me uh, in, a pro in a profession, lifetime classes, learn and continue to learn. I have been a teacher and uh, I still continue to learn. Uh, last month itself I wrote a very grueling examination in uh, energy conservation, but what the wonderful uh, uh, speakers have said in this and uh, still I continue to learn. Thank you. Engineer Ramesh Kumar Chung, sir, for his uh, contribution, uh, he has been selected for Lifetime Achievement Award. Chuk sir, I will read the contributions and the engineering field. I will try to. Uh, engineer Ramesh Kumar Chuk has been chosen by the idea for conferring his honor on him during the 11th convention 2018 in recognition of his professional excellence in the field of dairy engineering. Engineer Chu was a bright student throughout his education. He graduated in dairy technology during 74-78 batch and MTech in dairy engineering 79-82 batch from NDRI Karna. A rare combination of dairy technology and dairy engineering made a great foundation 
for his journey in the field of dairy. He started his career with Haryana Dairy Development Corporation Federation (HDBCF) as dairy supervisor at milk plant J, where he learned all the basics of operations and technology of milk products. After completing masters in dairy engineering in 1982, he joined MS Dairy. as dairy dairy and food engineer saharanpur as erection and commissioning engineer and was later on promoted as senior project engineer in 1985 he joined sddcf as dairy engineer and was promoted to chief general manager production and technical to manage the expansion modification renovation of all the existing new plants and chilling centers in the state of haryana as chief general manager he played a major role in formulating and implementing policies which turned hdbcf from loss making to profit making organization he is a certified engineer auditor presently he is the vice president indian dairy engineers association a senior member of indian dairy association north zone joint secretary ndri graduate association and the managing director of sir founded consultancy for the reliable dairy and food consultant in the organization of his meritorious service to the dairy engineering profession the organization organizing committee of the convention and seminar and i here take pride to honor engineer ramesh kumar chuk sir representing him the citation on the occasion of 11th idea convention and seminar held at indore thank you sir i am right of chuk sir to please sir. it is a great honor to achieve that of award after working in the industry for almost 40 years i am thankful to the indian dairy engineer association with whom i am associated as a founder member and it is my wish that in my that i will keep on working with the association as well as keep on working for the uplift of dairy engineers and dairy field in varna thank you all for the 10th national convention at anand in 2016 but we were set up to make it up at that time so we are awarding him the best lifetime achievement award this year for jeta ji please Engineer Vimal Chadda has been chosen by the IDA for conferring this award on him during the 10th National Convention in 2016 in recognition of his professional excellence in the field of dairy engineering. Vimal Chadda obtained B.Sc. degree from NDRI Karnal in the year 79, first class with M.Sc. Dairy Engineering from NDRI Karnal. Thereafter, he working for about four years in quality dairy. Joined as a senior project engineer with APV, Texmarco, Kolkata, and worked on the project and with APV and many projects in milk, food, and ice cream and aseptic yogurt project in Gurgaon. He started his own business in the year 1989 and completed many projects in Pepsi, Coke, and dairy industry for process system. Finally, he started his company in the name of Wayne Engineering. At Maida in 1993, and has been successfully running it today on the catering to the dairy plants, private and all milk cooperatives for supply of dairy equipment, milk products, milk and cream, pasteurizer, cup filling, sealing machine, and curd, ice cream, etc. In recognition to his meritorious service to the dairy industry profession, the organizing committee of the convention and the seminar and the idea take pride to honor engineer Vim Vimal Chadda by presenting him this citation on the occasion of. Tenth convention of dairy engineers and seminar held at Anand on 29 September 
to be part of this convention at Indore. And I am thankful to IDEA for honoring me. They have chosen me as for this particular award, which is being shared by many of my colleagues earlier, seniors, juniors, and I think the process will go on for the coming years in which we will be honoring our good friends, colleagues who have done something for the industry. I also, I would like to say I am also honored to be an alumni of NDRA Karnal, from where I have learned everything about dairy industry because I have been a dairy technologist and a dairy engineer. Today, dairy industry needs a combination of technologies and engineers and it has been there. People are associated with the industry for such a long time and giving so much to the industry and I am sure with the association of technologists and engineers, this industry will do laurels to the, this India and it will do very good for us. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Thank you. Indian Dairy Engineers Association, every year we are awarding best thesis award to FX students and PhD students. I request Dr. Aika Swami sir to announce the names. Thank the students for research at the beginning. IDEA, Indian Dairy Engineers Association has introduced best thesis award for PhD degree and MTech degree. And we have been giving this award for last two, three conventions. Now this year at 11th convention of Dairy Engineers, for PhD program thesis, the first prize goes to Dr. G. Mahesh Kumar. He has worked on design and development of microcontroller based subdairy thermal processor for manufacture of fried and soaked dairy products. The award carries a certificate and plus a prize money of rupees 15,000. Dr. F. Mergalin Eljiva Embrad from SRS ICR NDR at Bangalore. She worked on heat and mass transfer phenomena in combined convective and infrared baking of Channa Bodo under the guidance of Dr. Manjunathan. The award carries a certificate and a prize money of rupees 10,000. <laughs> PhD degree is given to Dr. Johan Istiak Hussain K. He worked on design and development and performance of a solar based incubation room for fermented dairy products under the guidance of Dr. A.G. Parhania at SMC College of Dairy Science at AAU Anna. <laughs> the award carries a certificate and a prize money of Rs. 7,500. Mr. Pratik Singh Palwar. He worked on modeling the kinetics of thermal degradation of heat under conventional and sub dairy prime conditions under the guidance of Dr. Manan Rekha Ravindra at ICR NDRI SRS Bangalore. The award carries the prize money of Rs. 10,000 and a certificate. Surya Vanshi Arvind. He worked on design and development of heat exchangers for controlling matting temperature in automatic paneer press. He worked under the guidance of Dr. 
मैंने देखा रविंद्रा एट आई सी आर एन डी आर आई एस आर एस बैंगलोर अवार्ड कैरी द सर्टिफिकेट एंड प्राइस मनी ऑफ सेवन थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड कुमार वाई एस ही वर्क ऑन सब बैरिक प्राइंग एंड शोकिंग प्रोसेस ऑप्टिमाइजेशन फॉर प्रेपरेशन ऑफ पंडोवा एंड मॉडलिंग ऑफ हीट एंड मास ट्रांसफर ही वर्क ऑन अंडर द गाइडेंस ऑफ डॉक्टर एम मंजूनाथा एट आई सी आर एन डी आर आई एस आर एस बैंगलोर द प्राइस कैरी द सर्टिफिकेट एंड प्राइस मनी ऑफ रूपीज फाइव थाउजेंड It's our privilege to have Dr. R. B. Singh sir, Honorable Vice Chancellor and Director, NDIA, at this forum. I request Dr. R. B. Singh sir, Chief Guest of this event, to deliver the address. Honorable Guest from the Dar, Sri Jaisa, MD Real. And uh, Dr. Shiv Prasad Kimoki, ADG Coordination at the ICR, uh, Executive Members of the IDA, Sadhguru uh, uh, Sir, Sani Sir, Chuk Sir, and BME. What uh, is that BME? Yeah, Party Media and Events. And uh, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen. Very good morning to all of you. Uh, For that outset, I would like to thank the organizers for having invited me and given me this opportunity to share the couple of things that I need to share with you. Uh, friends, uh, this morning, two, three of our speakers there have already shared what is so important, uh, what needs to be done for sustaining the growth of the industry. Uh, industry has been growing at a steady rate. Steady rate in the sense uh, since Operation Cut program was launched. I think the strategic interventions were made, and uh, the transformational changes that have taken place, all of us are aware of it. So I will not go into details of it, but certainly, uh, what is important to remember is that uh, even after a lapse of 30 to 40 years, the momentum has continued to be there, and uh, this is despite of the fact that no no major intervention was there. In the sense, inputs were steadily coming in, but these were through regular programs of the state government, the government of India. But was, there was no major uh, policy initiative that was involved in sustaining this momentum. So what we can say that 4% growth, couple of years down the line, and then subsequently it is almost 6%, and that is how it has. Now, I mean, it is being mentioned that almost it will be around 175 million tons of milk this year. So that is almost every year we are adding some 10 million tons of milk to the national pool. That is astronomical. Astronomical in the sense, at one point of time, a statistician and policy maker were telling that India will become a milk deficit country because demand will be almost 6 percent, whereas growth was almost 4.2 percent. But then subsequently the growth overtook, and it is almost matching the demand. So it is no, I mean, uh, no, it, it cannot be said now that it will be a deficit deficit country. But still, despite of this momentum and sustainability, what is alarming is that uh, as Dr. Singh Prasad was just now mentioning that farmers are not getting the price, and that is for sure. And uh, particularly because cooperatives usually cooperatives have been the main driver of the. This growth, and uh, but they have, I mean, because they have, they have uh, the social responsibility, and they are into a sector which is not very profitable. In the sense, the major uh, majority of the cooperatives they need to sell liquid milk, which is not very profitable. All of us are dairy men; we know for sure that it is not so much profitable. And obviously, but they have social social responsibility to ensure that liquid milk is supplied to everyone. Now, despite of this fact, cooperatives maintaining the momentum, maybe in many parts of the country, for this year and three, four years, for almost four years, we are we are uh, seeing that uh, pricing is not proper, and therefore farmers in many parts of the country they are reluctant to continue with dairy farming, and we keep on receiving this uh, this kind of feedback because we keep on receiving thousands of farmers every year from across the country. And they always say that this is, uh, I mean, uh, it is no longer profitable. Now this is a major cause of concern, and we need to look, relook at whatever we are doing. And uh, you know, uh, some three four years back, the national dairy plan was started by government of India, and uh, 
uh, NDP came into being and then they started operating this particular plan and uh, those, I mean whatever eligible benefits are to accrue in the new course of time that have not started yet coming but still 6% growth. Now if NDP, I mean they start growing with that, then obviously we will see a situation where still more milk will be coming in. So what kind of situation will be faced with? This needs to be looked at because when so much of milk will be available and then uh, we will not have processing capacity, then we will not have product profile that needs to be addressed to, then how, how it is going to, naturally it will not be so much profitable in that context. So, we, I mean, we in all the main or even our policy makers, they are of the opinion that we are at a crossroads. Because we need to find solutions so that the sustainable mo momentum of the growth could be sustained and then we need, we, we have buyers because there are buyers. Of almost all this milk which is coming to the national food is being consumed by most of the domestic consumers, obviously. And therefore, what needs to be done? In, our, in my opinion and in the opinion of many of the people whom I keep on discussing, uh, there are three drivers of Indian dairy that is going to continue to be important in, due and in the future. And so those are quality, as many of our my colleagues were just mentioning in the morning, quality is one, number two is efficiency, and third is innovation. These three will be the key drivers of the dairy economy. And therefore, quality obviously, because uh, I mean quality not from the perspective of only export because so far we have been talking about export and we say that okay our milk is being rejected because they do not fulfill the quality criteria. But in the domestic market if you look at, you will find that quality has become of paramount importance because people are now becoming far more aware of quality and even our statistics, we at India, if we continue to uh, deliver separate technology year after year and for us years we are looking, I mean, uh, we are realizing that almost 80-70% of the technology that we are commercializing are going to this particular domain. That means it is either uh, quick, cheap testing, quality testing kits or split based methods, these are the products that we are selling. So that means there are buyers and those buyers are mostly coming from across the spectrum. They are cooperative, they are private industries and they are individual buyers. And even for a startup, because we have an arrangement wherein we invite young entrepreneurs and those who are willing to become entrepreneurs, we invite them, we provide them facility and then we support them and we find that they are also looking at most of the time that this is one area in which they are going to have many, many buyers. And that is why quality will become of paramount importance. And then last year I read on article and this year also I was, I mean, I had an opportunity to hear Professor Dr. R. He also did mention of this because, I mean, China, China because China is now very aggressive in almost all technology domain. Even in dairy, I had an opportunity to look at the statistics. I saw that in 90, they had very small quantity of milk being produced in that country. But of late, say, last two, three years, the figure that has come out of this because they are very guarded about their figure. But last to last year probably we had an opportunity to check the figures and it was almost 40 million tons of milk. 40 million tons of quality milk. And this is almost equal to what the New Zealand and Australia produced together. And this is a top of I mean high quality milk, very good quality milk. Naturally, so far our export market has been restricted to the countries in the nearby vicinity, our neighboring countries, who are not very conscious of quality. Naturally, then this kind of milk, because they are mostly large meat eating country, obviously a large, a large quantity of this particular milk which is going to come uh, into the market, I mean uh, which is being produced in, the, in that particular country, obviously will become surplus milk and obviously they will find their way into the market where we are getting at the moment. So quality will be far more important and uh, we will not be even selling, we will not be in a position to sell our products in those markets where at the moment selling. So that is why we say that quality will be of paramount importance it is today and it will become far more important in the near future. And therefore engineering, because of you are dairy engineers, you are, I mean of course most of you are at the moment catering to uh, equipment designing and all, but probably this is one area in which we will have to have I mean, uh, to relook at, we will have to have a relook at, and this is uh, this is what I was 
discussing in the morning with Jair Dham also. Because we need to collaborate and we need to see to because whatever the scripts are quality controlled food kits that we are developing at the moment, these are script based manually handled. And but they are very user friendly. But probably if we can make it to machine readable, it will be a great help and it will find more buyer. Now we have got efficiency. That is another domain which is very critical. And already again in the morning, Arwan Sahib was also mentioning, and my other colleagues also mentioned that efficiency is of paramount importance. Yes, because our students also see during some study, particularly in their economics and all, so they do survey. And we have access to something there. And say, say for example, at the moment, sour milk. Still, we say that the spirit of bulk milk pool is being set up at many specific locations across the country. Still, 0.5 to 3 percent of milk is spoiled because of this particular problem. So that is quite significant. Now, about transportation cost. Transportation also. I mean, we have worked out. It is almost roughly the same. It will be for the entire country. Almost 25 to 40 paisa a liter of milk for transporting milk from the point of collection to the point of chilling. Another 20 to 30 to 35 paisa for transporting it from chilling center to the processing unit. That works out to around 70 to 80 paisa, which is significant, enormous. Now here is the opportunity to cut cost. Then about the efficiency, we were telling that almost 70 to 80 paisa. I think now there is no. The one thing we are also knowing that almost 70 80 percent of the energy cost comes from the count of heating. And so we were talking about solar energy and all that. And many of the dairy industry or many of the dairy manufacturers, product manufacturers, they are conscious of it and they have started switching over to this solar energy. And hopefully in the years to come, this will be a worry area, which will be very critical and we will have a lot of opportunity to deliver on this. Now about the third intervention is innovation. Innovation is of course key driver. It will be key driver in the sense uh, as you have realized of late that uh, so far whatever surplus milk we have created we were uh, uh, producing and that particularly during first season, most people are absorbed for converting into that milk solids in the form of SLP and water milk. And it has been catastrophic because again when it is linked to uh, global cyclic industry, obviously there has been no uptake and the industry has been suffering and that is what has resulted ultimately into disappointment to the farmer. And that will continue to be so unless we diversify and we try to become innovative. And now we find that there are many more opportunities which are appearing and people are thinking of it. So industry need to be innovative in the sense they need to work. Because there are now many product profiles and there are consumers for almost every segment. As you also realize sitting in Delhi and other places that there are buyers who are willing to pay 100 rupees a litre of milk. So there are buyers for such products also. One of thing is that we need to identify those challenges. And it's not always that innovation has to be demand driven. Not at all. Sometimes innovations are to be created and then subsequently this will become demand. Because I remember in the 80s when I was a student at NDI, a product was launched, something like it was called yogurt. I do not remember the name of the firm, it was launched in Delhi. And then uh, in a, after a year or two it died off. But then subsequently after almost 10, 15 <laughs> years after that, or some of them are there, I do not remember, even the 80s. But then subsequently, you know, now nobody really makes Delhi at home. So everyone is buying after that. So that kind of, because that, probably that happened before it was scheduled to happen. But it happened and then subsequently, so what I mean to tell you, and then another example is lactose free milk, you know, lactose free, free milk in Europe was launched in somewhere around 78, 80. And when the company, I, I do or some company was there, they launched it and it flopped. But this has continued with selling that milk and then now there is a huge market, lactose free milk. What I mean to say is, it is technology or innovation has not to be always demand driven, sometimes we have to offer because we have to see the opportunity, we have to innovate and we have to place it before the consumer so that it becomes, again it becomes used to it. It may take some time but then it will become a part of the daily routine. So friends, these are three things that I wanted to share with you. Another thing that is very close to our heart is because I am representing NDI, we are in the human resource development and that is one of the issues that we are going to discuss probably tomorrow. We have a session particularly devoted to this. So human resource development and daily education, this is also a very important segment that we are going to discuss tomorrow. And uh, why I wanted to just mention it, because there is a popular perception. Because people often talk to me and they say that, oh, 
होगी तो डेली स्कूल बहुत सेचुरेट हो गया है ग्रेजुएट्स के लिए जगह नहीं है बट
yesterday. I am very thankful to her. Your work, your word, cautious words about profitability and social responsibility of milk producers and cooperatives and policy decision on momentum of growth to be sustained. And also the three parameters for profitability, naming, quality, efficiency and innovation are well taken sir and their engineers are very cautious about this and certainly we are enlightened with your guidance sir. We are once again I thank you sir for this. I am thankful to Dr. A.K. Jain, the managing director of REAP for gracing this occasion as guest of honor. Sir, your valuable suggestions about integration of dairy industry and energy industry is well taken, sir. And another suggestion to me is very appealing is about the electrical vehicles. It is a promising and I am hearing and reading that other automobiles will vanish in 10 years and all electrical vehicles will be there. So it is well taken, sir. I once again thank you, sir, for coming to this convention and uh, gracing this occasion and blessing us on this occasion. I am thankful to Dr. Shri Prasad Kimothi, our Assistant Director General Coordination at ICR New Delhi. At the start of his talk, he said that I am not an engineer. I don't agree with this. He is a man of milk production and management and he has managed for several years the NDRI cattle yard and uh, as a head of dairy cattle management division. He has got renovated the NDRI cattle yard housing buildings. So that is a job of engineer. He is really an engineer. No dairy engineer came to his rescue while designing and uh, executing this. So, uh, <laughs> You are, sir, you are actually the daily engineer in the production of milk side. <laughs> sir, your work about commitment of the council to the help of the farmers in tapping the neighborhood market. Neighborhood market is very important because we are in an area where the market is very, very high. And uh, I don't know whether I should be saying this is going to Bangladesh on this tomorrow. So he is a part of India delegation on this very topic. So sir, I once again thank you. And you also suggested that you will take the uh, dairy engineers matter to the council. I am thankful to you sir for coming to this place, enlightening us and gracing this occasion with your benign presence. I am thankful to all the delegates who have come from across the country for participating in this convention. Life Member Achievement Awardee, I congratulate them and welcome to this place Dr. Ravi Kumar, Dr. R.K. Chuk and Engineer Veer. We have a eminent galaxy of dairy engineers from Milk Fed and Haryana Federation. I thank Dr. Garewal, Sanjeevji, Arora Sahab, SS Kohli from Milk Fed and Haryana Dairy for participating and helping us in organization of this convention, sir. We have a group of professionals from industry. I am very thankful to engineer R.P. Singh, M.C. Chawla, V. Sumesh Chok, for coming to this place and gracing this occasion, sir. Academician from universities need to be appreciated. So I thank Mahesh Kumar ji, Ravi Kumar ji, Mr. Kojre, Varnawal ji for gracing this occasion and uh, helping in organization of this uh, convention. I also thank and Congratulate the best thesis award winners who have present who are present here and who could not come to, to make it to this place. So I congratulate them and uh, thank them for participating in this. 
I'm thankful to you to Bharati Media and Events, Mr. Sunil Devji and Bharati for offering this platform to us to conduct the seminar and their timely help, collaboration and support. I appreciate them and thank them. Lastly, I thank the team Idea 2018 of NDRI Karnal, especially Engineer S K Chaudhary, Engineer J K Dwas, Engineer Sunil, Engineer Ankit Deep, Engineer Pawan Kumar, Dr. Chitra Nayak, and Dr. Varnwal, who made this convention a success from a remote place. Many of us have not visited to Indore. We have did everything at NDRI Karnal. And conveyed to this place, so many are moment, so everything was done at Karnal, and we are sorry that in transportation there is some lacuna, and our things are on the way to come here, and it will reach today evening. So once again, I thank one and all. Uh, if I have omitted some mistakes, kindly condone me. Thank you. ಜಗಿತರಂಗ ತವ ಶುಭ ಆಶಿಷ ಮಾಂಗೇ ಗಾಹೆ ತವ ಜಯ ಜನಗಣ ಮಂಗಲ ದಾನಕ ಜಯ ಹೇ ಭಾರತ ಭಾಗ್ಯ ವಿಧಾತ ಜಯ ಹೇ ಜಯ 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 Thank you all.